Hello and welcome back to the channel. So this lecture is all about choosing the right database for your system. So in the previous lectures we have seen all about different database technologies which we can integrate with Hadoop as well as we have seen how we can integrate it with Spark to read and write the data and run some simple analytics task and we also got some meaning out of our data right so this lecture is basically focused on how we can choose the right database for your application so there are so many considerations which can go for this but this will be just a basic overview i'm not going to get into more technical but give you just a basic idea which things we need to consider for picking up the right database or do we really need an external database so let's get into it so the first and most important consideration is scalability so we just we need to make sure that if our application should need a higher scalability or not so if you are building the next big thing it will definitely need a scalable system which can scale in a horizontal manner where you cannot scale up vertically by just increasing the ram or just computing power of your server you need some solution which can scale in horizontal manner where you can add servers to accommodate with this higher need and our no sql databases are just for that purpose so if you talk about mysql it's great if you have less data or if your data is not that much scalable but if you talk about huge transaction rates or else you are supporting a website for example which has millions of users coming in and out so to store these huge amounts of data you need something scalable so if you choose cassandra hbase or mongodb we can scale it horizontally by just adding more servers into it and it will be way more cost efficient and easily scalable so that is the first consideration you need to make to choose a database technology so the second one is integration so this is very important as we have seen we have integrated apache spark with hbase as well as cassandra as well as mongodb so we have done all the analytics operation on spark and use this no sql databases just as a storage layer so it shows that apache spark can be easily integrated with this system so you have to choose a right database which would easily integrate with your other components so there are so many connectors available which we have seen in the earlier lectures which we can use for integrating different systems which can serve as specific operations so you have to make sure that the tools which you are choosing should be easily integrated so for example if you are using a relational database and for scalability purpose if you want to migrate to a nosql database you need to make sure that both these technologies can easily integrate and there is a connector available for it or not and the database technology which you are choosing should also have capability to run some sql pick queries just like your traditional rdbms which makes it easy to integrate so the next consideration is it support which is needed to support our application this is pretty important one so if you are deploying a new technology you have to make sure that you have the expertise and the knowledge personals to support this system because let's be honest to implement all these technologies you need to have a technical staff which has all the knowledge for administrative task as well as the configuration task which is very crucial to make your system secure and also serves all its purposes and in case of any failures or downtime you should have the sufficient it support to handle that issue and solve it as soon as possible so let's be honest if you are handling a large application which serves millions of users there should be no downtime and you should have a proper support whenever required so that's why you should consider what type of it support you need before choosing a right database technology for you so the next one is cost consideration i don't think that is a important one because all of the technologies that we have seen are open source and free to use and also you are going to deploy them on the linux operating system so that's also free to so you you are just paying for the it support as well as the servers so that is the reason cost consideration would not be much important than the other considerations that we have seen so for this just you need to consider the cost of the servers and also you can rent it over aws or else azure or google is also providing its own cloud platform so that also make it very cost effective and you can choose from a various plans which can be appropriate for your specific need so just you need to optimize the cost of the servers and not worry about 
the other aspects such as the technology itself as well as the operating system but here the most important consideration we need to take is cap theorem so we have discussed this cap theorem in one of our previous lectures where we have seen what really is a cap theorem and and what are the different sides of the triangles so basically it has consistency which means your system should be consistent and give the consistent result to the end user as well as it should be highly available so you should not have any downtime or your server should not be down and it's available all the time to serve clients and next one is a partition tolerance it is the biggest need of big data so if you're talking about big data partition tolerance is the mandatory thing that you should have so so you can make mysql partition tolerant but it will need the things such as sharding and all which which increases the administrative task and it is not that much convenient so if you're focusing more on the big data side you should be focusing on partition tolerance and you need to favor one between consistency and availability so we have seen in cassandra as well as dynamo db or if you talk about couch db which comes in the bottom side of the triangle we're getting high availability and partition tolerance but the consistency should be compromised so if you talk about cassandra which we have seen earlier it doesn't have any master servers it has the gossip protocols in which the nodes will communicate with each other to take all the decisions and also stores the data and processes it so and also all the nodes will carry out the same task so that's why it is a very highly available system but not much consistent so let's say for example if you have five nodes and if user needs some data but your only two nodes are agreed on one value then it is not that much consistent if you're talking about but nowadays cassandra has the capability to increase consistency a bit so you can just dial up the consistency and you can say i can wait for some time but i need a consistent data so that you can do in cassandra so it will be a better choice if you also need more consistency but if you cannot afford the lesser consistency and you need the result very precise so if you're talking about stock exchange this has a very crucial financial transactions which you cannot afford to give us the wrong value and that is the reason consistency is the major thing and you can trade off between availability means system is down for some seconds you can afford that so in that case apache hbase as well as mongodb as well as redis these systems could be favorable than the cassandra because they will give you higher consistency as well as the partition tolerance so partition tolerance means your system should be scalable and it can accommodate the high load on the system and can add servers as per the requirements it's just like a horizontal scalability so by taking this consideration you need to choose a right database technology for you but it is not necessary sometimes so if you are not handling a very large data and you have the legacy system in which the data is not growing that much then you can definitely choose mysql or any other rdbms because it will give you consistency as well as availability but it it will not be suitable for handling big data so if you don't have big data rdbms pretty much does all the work you need and also you can use different sorts of strategies such as indexing which which makes your query execution much more efficient so that's why this cap theorem is very important consideration while you're selecting a database but it is not like fixed so if you talk about cassandra you can just dial up the consistency and you can say like i need more consistency than the availability so this is not a hard and fast tool for selecting a database but to get your basic idea this is what it is so you need to choose two sides of the triangle if you are serving big data so either choose consistency or availability let's see how we can choose a better solution for that purpose so as far we have talked about different sorts of consideration while choosing a right database technology but let's take some real world example for this so our first example is so let's say if you are building an phone directory app which contains contact information of all the employees in your organization so for storing this information 
you have to first check all the consideration and then you can take the right decisions so the first thing it should be the scalability of course for storing this contact information scalability is not that needed you can just scale the server in in vertical manner if needed but i don't think it is a big challenge so you don't need that much scalability in this example and if we talk about consistency so consistency is not much an issue the eventual consistency should be fine so if anyone changes the contact information and if you are not getting the latest information in the next second it is not end of the world so you can just also compromise consistency and uh, if you talk about availability it is not a critical information if you see but it is more important than the scalability and consistency so in that case as you don't need that much scalability and also you can compromise consistency and availability is also fine then you can select rdbms instead of nosql and if you probably have mysql installed on your web server then it's good to go right so in this example we can choose mysql and it will be more appropriate database for your scenario but in the another example if you want to mine web server logs so if you have like a website which serves millions of users and if you have huge traffic coming in and out of the website and you need to do some analytics on the web logs so let's say if you want to check when most of the visitors and at what time the visitors are visiting your web page or else what is the average session length for those users so for mining the web servers i don't think you need any of the solutions which we talk about so as it's it could be your internal analytics platform to get some interesting insights from your web logs then you don't even need no sql or relational databases also you can just populate that data in sdfs and you can integrate apache spark with hadoop to run your analytics job and also if you want to get more graphical you can use tableau or just use power bi to get some insights in a more interactive way so in this example the answer should be none of the databases which we have talked about but for the next example let's say if you have a big analytics job which produces product recommendation for the end users so let's say if you are serving an application like amazon and if millions of users are visiting your website and you need to provide some product recommendation engine to your customers so in that case definitely scalability is much needed because if the number of users or customers are growing day by day your system should be horizontally scalable so definitely you should need some partition tolerance so we are talking about no sql here but if you talk about consistency you don't need the latest data at every second right it is just like a product recommendation engine it is not some critical financial transaction which you cannot afford to be a less consistent you can get away with the consistency but your system should be highly available so you cannot mess up with the availability because let's say you don't want users to be waiting on your website if it is down so that is the reason availability and scalability are the biggest important things for this example so i hope you know the answer yes cassandra is the best solution for this example because cassandra is highly available as well as horizontally scalable so you can run your spark job which does all the analytics on top of the cassandra which is again you know highly scalable as well as available so these are some examples where we can consider this different aspects to choose a right database technology for our application so if the inter interviewer gives you the scenario and ask which database is more appropriate in this example then then this lecture will help you crack that problem I hope you like this lecture so please subscribe to our channel and also ring the notification bell to get the latest updates and don't forget to follow us on our social media which i have linked in the description below thanks for watching